Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here with me, Andrew Zarian. We're going to talk about Survivor Series here. But the big story, the big story, we got to start off with this. Men's Elimination, I keep calling it the Elimination Chamber match. Wow, War Games match. I don't know why. I guess the cage. It's breaking my brain. Main event was a Men's War Games match. Show's about to go off the air. All the competitors are still in the cage. They do the, the, uh, the lower third where they're signing off, and all of a sudden, you hear it. CM Punk's music starts playing. He comes out in the ramp in his white T-shirt. People are losing their minds. I, I, I think by the time that they pulled this off, the, the CM Punk stuff had settled, and the expectation was that he wasn't going to show up for a lot of people in that building. I spoke to numerous people that were there. Uh, this morning, and one of the six that I spoke to, seven actually, said, oh, I expected him to be there. I think the expectation was that you got a pretty decent show. You got Randy coming back. Gigantic. Huge. Jack to the gills, this guy. Uh, you know, and that was enough for a lot of people. But turns out that was not the end. Punk Punk's music hits. He's standing on the ramp. Seth Rollins is visibly upset. They show he's giving the finger. Uh, you know, th this is all fan footage, right? And Rollins is being shown he's being held back by Corey Graves and Michael Cole. This came off as an angle, right? I, I think a lot of people, th there's going to be a lot of blurred lines here again, unfortunately. And I hope it doesn't lead down that same path because he's such a polarizing guy, CM Punk. Uh, you know, so obviously they're building something there. Per Dave this morning, Wrestling Observer Radio stated that he signed a multi-year deal. The deal came together 10 days ago and was kept really quiet. So, I mean, first of all, kudos to everybody that was able to shut up and not say a word, okay? the I never got one inkling of fact from anybody that he would be showing up. It was a lot of, well, we could, we... You know, a couple things I did here. There were graphics being prepared, but I, again, no way to verify this, right? It, it's just something that somebody said, and a lot of times you do that if you feel like you're being kept in the dark. If you're one of the network partners, uh, and, you know, maybe you feel like you're not, you're not being told everything, uh, you prepare for stuff like this. You know, very, it's very common. So that, that wasn't enough for me. But around 9 o'clock last night, I got a text message and from somebody over there saying, hey, are you watching Survivor Series? And I sent the screenshot. You know, I had it on in my living. I had a bunch of people over my house. Everybody's watching it. It's, you know, the Thanksgiving tradition here. And I was like, yeah. Uh, and then I got some information about, you know, the, the numbers for the show being astronomical. The opening women's war games match see i'm not i'm not calling it elimination chamber this time uh it was the most viewed opening match outside of a wrestlemania ever on peacock on pay-per-view i also found out that it was the most viewed survivor series at that point right they were gonna they were they, they were blowing through the viewership so you know when i get a message like that it's almost like hey turn it on right I, you know, this was a big surprise, and it was great. I like being surprised here. This was something that we, we've spoken about for many, many years. Would he go back? Could he go back? And I guess it can. Triple H in the press conference after this. We're going we're gonna to run down this whole card, but this is, you know, the big story here. Uh, he said the deal with Punk came together very quickly. Uh, it really didn't come into uh, fruition until everybody stopped thinking it was going to happen, and all of a sudden it just did. This is all Triple H. He says, love him, hate him, positive, negative. People want to talk about him. He said that both he and Punk were different people, alluding to Punk's departure from WWE in 2014, which ended on terribly bad terms. I'm a different person. He's a different person. It's a different company. We're all on the same. We're all on the same even starting ground. I almost, I almost yelled at our producer. I thought that was a typo, but it wasn't. Uh, he said that the only people who knew about Punk's return was himself and WWE President Nick Khan. 
this was they told the talent i believe an hour before they went out which that kind of makes sense with the timing of my um of what i was you know the message i got so listen i think this is a huge deal for wwe the momentum has shifted obviously they have uh you know they've been firing on all cylinders the bloodline storyline has been unbelievable that cooled off a little bit cody now comes in he continues this la knight is caught on fire has been helping them tremendously now you also have the this element of cm punk if you're a touring company you have now those markets that you feel that maybe you've exhausted or maybe in 2014 you're 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 looking at a little bit of a downturn in, in attendance business a couple hundred there maybe a thousand people there you just eliminated all of that you're starting over now which is unbelievable i think the reality here is that they have a very unique opportunity Matt, my producer, give me your thoughts. Um, I think it's very good for business uh, going forward. This guy, for a long time, was, I would say, I don't know, one of the better, to me, one of the biggest draws of all time. And you can see what it did for AEW. So bringing him in now is, I think, good good for them, right? Mm. Yeah, I... I... Listen, here's the reality. What does this mean now for AEW? I, as far as the yeah. optics battle, right? And that's a term WWE loves to use. Uh, they This was a huge hit to AEW. And I, I was on In the Weeds with Joel and Jeremy. And we were talking about this on Fightful. And, you know, my they asked me what I think. I said, if there's an opportunity for WWE to stick it to them or to be able to undercut them in some way, Beat them in that optics battle of social media that's so polarizing. You know, this would be the moment to do it if you had an opportunity to do it. They took that opportunity. This is strictly I a business the biggest... decision. They're in they're in a war, even though they're not, they're they're in first place tremendously. It's still you gotta be competitive, and this is what they're doing. And they signed a guy that was labeled toxic and dangerous by the other guys. Mm -hmm. And now you have an opportunity to show, hey, guys, it's not it's not the talent. It's the company. Come yeah. over here. Look how much better it is. You don't have to. You don't have these problems. People are sane here. You know, I'm not saying that that's the truth. I'm saying that, that that's how this is presenting. You know, this could blow up. He could be there and he could have the same exact issues and something happens. And you're like, you know what? It is the guy. How many chances are you going to give him? Or... This is going to turn into a great multi-year run for him. Um, and he's going to repair his legacy. And this was part of why he went to AEW. When he decided that he was going to AEW, he was really... Obviously, he got the wrestling itch, and he loves wrestling. But it was also a, a, a rehab on his image. One of the most important characters for a generation of professional wrestling turned out to be the villain? He doesn't want that. So now we have a very unique chance. Now, the match opportunities are endless. Him and Seth Rollins, obviously. Him and Nakamura, that was teased. Him and Roman. Could that be, could it be him and Roman also? Him and Cody. I want to see him and AJ Styles. Something I've, I've never seen. These are very unique matches and opportunities. The WWE has in their hands. Whether or not it works out, we're going to find out. But, you know, we're back in that CM Punk vortex. We're going to be talking to him about him. And this was the hottest that both companies got. You know, AEW got hot because of Punk. And now WWE is going to have this opportunity. A very unique opportunity. The winter of Punk. <laughs> not the summer of Punk. The winter of punk. We're going to talk about this a little bit more when we come back from break. Also, all of Survivor Series. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned.